Vamos a continuar con las presentaciones. En este caso de la empresa Sixbit, lamentablemente el señor Kunker no nos puede acompañar, pero nos ha mandado a un sustituto, el señor Affel. 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 Yeah. Eh, I must apologize by, because my English is very bad, but I simply introduce you, Mr. Affel, from Sixbit. Eh, Come, uh, the online auction platform, and no more words. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you did very well, by the way. Um, your English is much better than my Spanish, so uh, <laughs> so that was uh, that was very good. Yeah. So um, Ulf Künke was meant to uh, have this presentation, um, but he was unable to make it. So he asked me very last minute to step in. Um, and uh, when he asked me, I was quite happy about it in a way because uh, I've used Sixbid um, myself personally for 20 years. Obviously, as you might know, Sixbid was the first auction platform out there. Um, but then I've also used Sixbid quite a lot um, through my company, the Coin Cabinet, of which I founded in 2012, which were based in London and you will find our auctions on the Sixbit platform. Um, so before we start the presentation, can I ask you how many here are currently using Sixbit? If you, just to get an idea. Okay. You don't know? You've never heard of it? Okay. Yeah, but it's a, uh, it's, it's a platform that allows you to find auctions Um, current auctions, auctions that are coming today, tomorrow, in the future. It also has a search portal which allows you to search for um, auction results. And specifically what I'm going to be presenting to you today is the Coin Collector's Archive, um, which is uh, something of a new project that Sixbid started um, fairly recently which is uh, basically digitizing and uh, uh, scanning and digitizing old auction catalogs. Um, I mean, those of you who are in the ancient coin space know the importance of uh, provenances, the ownership history of coins. Um, and this tool has been designed for the serious collector to allow you to find old auction archives. So um, the process of scanning these auction catalogs uh, is a very long and laborious uh, process. Um, but un up until now, about 1,000 auction catalogs have been scanned and uh, they're being uploaded onto the uh, collector's archive as and when they are ready. And Sixbit has a goal to scan around 1,000 catalogs per year. Um, so it's a new project, of course, um, and it's going to take a long time to get all the auction catalogs up there. But, um, you know, Sixbit will be starting with the more important ones and then, you know, going down from there. Um, when I spoke to Ulf the other day, he said that actually there were... Uh, just completed the uh, the Swedish auction house Alstroms uh, around 70 or so catalogs, um, which were starting in the late 1960s and going up to about 2002. Um, I'm Swedish, so uh, I was very pleased with that. Um, but there is a lot of other ones, other auction houses that are more important um, in Germany and Switzerland and so on, and uh, the oldest ones will go back to around 1850, um, once in the UK. Um, and yeah, so like I said, the, the, the process is, is quite laborious, but um, they're doing a good progress with that. So yeah, just wanted to run through this with you and show you um, how you can use this Uh, when you search for, for coins that you own or that you're potentially looking to buy, um, then this will be a good tool for you um, to verify provenances. And you could find auction catalogs going back to prior to 1970, which I will show you in the, in the presentation, 
um, which will obviously add a lot of value to your coins. And as we've seen more recently, will also protect you and your collection from having any sort of legal issues. Um, so it's obviously a very, very important aspect of uh, the ancient coin uh, collecting. So, um, yeah, this um, Pantica Pion gold stator is a, a coin which some of you be, be familiar with. It's a very rare ancient coin, very beautiful coin, and there are some variations, and it sort of gets more expensive when the head is facing us. Um, um, but uh, just to give you an idea, so um, at the top end you have the more recent sales, which will be included in the blue um, subscription model, the free plan, the blue plan. Um, that's showing you results going back 12 months in time. So obviously no scanning of catalogs is required for that, because that's just the current uh, results and then if you want to go beyond that there is a um, so yeah here is the blue plan continuing giving you the last 12 months worth of sales data and if you want to dig down deeper into the archive then the collectors archive which is the silver plan um, will be showing you more results and as you can see here it's show, giving you options to subscribe for these um, higher tiers of subscription. Um, so, um, yeah, that's the next one is um, going back to prior to 1970. That gives you access to the whole database of all the scan catalogs. So from 2000, it's... Um, uh, some of them will be scanned, but majority of these uh, catalogs don't need to be scanned because they're all digital from 2000. So the silver uh, subscription uh, gives you data going back to 2000 until today. And to go all the way back, um, you would need to have the gold subscription. And then, you know, you can see here there are some results from 1982, 1978 from Loy. And of course, the images are then black and white. Um, and in fact, this was able to find four results going back to 1934. Um, so, and I don't know in terms of value, how much value that will add to this particular coin. If you were to find your coin in this, as a, with the, with the, um, with a, an auction result going back from 1930 or even 1950 or 60, it will obviously add a lot of value to, to your coin. So, um, so yeah, that's uh, in short what uh, this will be doing. And like I said, the progress is happening as we speak and it's going to get better and better and, and give you more and more as uh, Sixbit is continuing to scan. There is a huge scanning machine, um, which I've seen in, in, in Zurich when, uh, with the, a process of basically scanning every page. Um, so as you can imagine, it's, uh, it's taking time, but with your support, um, with your uh, subscriptions, uh, we can speed up this process as well. Of course, there's a, it's all a question of uh, available resource. And, uh, and, and will and support from the uh, collecting community. So, um, yeah, as we all know, the importance of provenance. Um, I hope we'll get your support. Um, any questions here in the room or any comments on this? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, elements of the project is delivered in other parts of Europe and uh, possibly also in other parts of the world. Um, there is uh, scanning that happens sort of in, in Zurich, in, in Hestivo's uh, offices. Um, and then there are other people involved with uh, the process of uh, digitizing the, the catalog. Some of it is automated, um, but there is a lot of, uh, let's say, error checking that needs to be happening, and a lot of um, matching 
Um, so especially when it comes to translation between different languages, the search algorithm um, needs to, uh, let's say, have a lot of attention because you can type in a German phrase or an English phrase and of course you don't want to have to type in different phrases to get different search results um, and, and that is just a bit of process that will take some time to completely kind of develop that process and some of that can be done you know resource for 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 a lower cost let's say um, but uh, yeah some of it is happening in, in Zurich yeah mm -hmm. Shana. How are you the um, in terms of the catalogs, yeah, yeah, the 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 Hestivo um, auction catalog um, or book uh, library is is quite extensive, and uh, yeah, but I think Ulf will yeah Ulf will be happy to work with someone um, like you or anyone else if there are other catalogs out there that are not being added. And I think this, this should be seen as a, as a project that is, uh, you know, benefiting obviously the whole community. So the more collaboration that can be done on this, I think the better. And it, it's, it's sort of about identifying where is the lowest hanging fruit, which auction catalogs are the most important ones to um, to produce and to digitize and um, so I think Ulf will and I will as well um, happily take any feedback from from anyone who is out there with good ideas uh, in terms of how to roll this out but uh, of course there is already a strategy in place but as I said it's a sort of uh, you know a, a, a communally benefiting uh, project mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, I guess we're all concerned about what impact AI could potentially have uh, in various fields and including in, in numis numismatics. To my knowledge, this is a database um, which is using search algorithms to pull up um, results from the database and the information is not in any way manipulated. Um, so you search for something, if there is a result in the database, it comes up. Um, mm -hmm. Same here. <laughs> What is different there is that they are taking the text and 
photos you are not using, the photos you are working with, the text we are working with, keywords, uh, it's like searching the classical uh, numismatic archive. Yeah. So that's, it's, it has the advantages of the classical numismatic archive and it has the disadvantages of the classical numismatic archive. But it's, uh, it's word search based. Because that actually would be, I'm sorry, I'm no, this is really irrelevant, yeah. So, I think that's part of the problem is that the one gentleman that I spoke to was only using the plates as the yeah. as matching it up. And the problem is, is with a lot of these older catalogs, if you use the text, that's probably a better way to go at it because then at least you're, you know, it's going to make some sense. But he's not interested at all in the text. Well, I mean, yeah, thanks for asking these questions. I think it's really relevant for everyone to uh, to understand. But uh, yeah, I think, I mean, from my experience with AI, uh, I mean, if you go back to the 1930s and so on, pictures aren't that great. But I can't... Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It won't show as an edge split. Yeah. You won't see that at all. Yeah. And so if you're trying to base your your analysis on, you know, a a one to one, mm. you're not gonna see that edge split. So no. you, you won't, you won't so, so maybe that's the answer in a way that actually doing the search on images is probably not as as good as or it can't be verifiable. It can't be it could be perfect, but it, it's like it's it couldn't be completely trusted at least once you go behind a certain uh, date um, so that that's not how the system has been developed until now and maybe at some point there is a scope to bring in AI in a way that is benefiting the platform but I think that's sort of going a little bit um, ahead of uh, the project uh, as to where it is at the moment um, yeah any others mm-hmm Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's... The future seems to be there, and it seems mm. to me that even the encapsulations, what, what they're doing basically is locking the coin in plastic and saying, this is that mm. coin. Mm. But once you've got a, a total scan of that coin, there, there can't be another coin exactly like that anyway, mm. so it has to be unique. Yeah. Of course, you have to have these scanners, and everybody has to have these... Uh, 
readers and everything mm -hmm. for yeah. these coins, but somehow or other, I think the future's there. Yeah. I know that the uh, World Canadian Mint has developed a system uh, for bullion coins like that. Yeah, no. And it, uh, the problem is um, a question of data. They, they have developed a system you just take a, a little, little piece of uh, with nanotechnology, mm -hmm. and there you have, even by, with bullion coins, uh, like a QR code. Right, everything's different. Yeah. But the problem is a question of data, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. We have too many coins, really, to to do that right now on a reasonable, on a reasonable level. Mm -hmm. The technology is there. Yeah. We did some tests in London, actually, with the uh, with a university where we used a very high resolution scanner scanning down to one micron, and we were actually able to grade coins with the scanner based on the difference in height between the inner part of Queen King George the Fifth's ear on a gold sovereign versus a lower grade. And the difference was very significant and measurable through this um, through this uh, this process. So that was a project I was involved in. So I'm very curious and interested in what Sixbit's doing here. Um, I think this has great value um, for the coin collecting community and especially for the ancients um, part of that community. Um, so yeah, I look forward to um, all of you signing up and. Uh, any other questions? Well, I don't know what time so we've got. What, what time is it? I think we've oh, got. It's yeah. Coming. One more question? Yeah. yeah. Question about okay. The costs. okay. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> the cost for the subscription. Yes. In fact, I have been sent this. In... Sorry for not being. 100% prepared, but um, yeah, I can't find it. But the um, I believe that the uh, oh yes, it's 66 euros for the silver, which goes back to 2000, and it's 666. Don't know why they, all the sixes came out, <laughs> but. Uh, 666 for the uh, gold subscription, which has um, all the scanned auction catalogs going back, you know, from the beginning. So um, that's that's the price. Yeah. I think that's higher. Isn't there about 1,111? If you want to decide which catalog that Oh, really? I didn't know that. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's both. Maybe it. <laughs> yeah, it's a interesting pricing strategy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just do 665 maybe or 667. Yeah. <laughs> you can pay 665 this year and 667 next year. Yeah. You can decide if you do the 1111, you can decide what catalog. Exactly. You will have a say which catalog you want to This is a yearly subscription, yeah, 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 yeah. So, any, any more questions? So thank you very much for yeah. your presentation. All right, thanks very much. Um, thank mm. you for, to all the presents. Yeah, thank you.